Okay, by the time we got to the other oven, it's pretty good. <laughs> this end is definitely too loose. I don't know if you want me to redo it or not. This is definitely a practice issue. <laughs> See, by the time I got down to this end, I was getting it nice and tight. This end, I was a little too loose. I don't know if you, I need to redo that or... Because down here, it's nice and tight. Down there, it's not. Yeah, right here, you started. Yeah. I was yeah. having trouble keeping That's it. That's okay. Over. I'll start at that end. Okay. Because this end's pretty good. This it's it's mostly even, and it's pretty tight. Okay. That is all right. <coughs> Your classic practice issue, you know. Okay. I gotta practice this twenty-seven times. <laughs> no. Oh, whenever I use a new machine, I always feel like such a club. <laughs> A little bit to get used to the, uh, the pedal the thing pedal. is scary. Yeah. <laughs> the pedal is scary. Mm -hmm. ah. Whenever you buy something new, mark on the book or the bottom of the furniture when you got it. Yeah. And then turn that one upside down, see if I marked it. No, oh, the, the this wood. Thing. I didn't mark either one of them. I thought I did. So much for thinking. <laughs> what were you thinking you marked them for? Mark the center. Oh, I did on the inside. I knew I did. extra fabric on this one you won't know what to do with it all just on front and back not on the side <laughs> right right here it's going to be tight I, I could have a little more I imagine but I didn't You want to try this? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to let you do it. I think I would be a coward on this one. I mean, I, I see what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're just levering back and forth and stretching and making sure that, you know, like okay. you're... What you, you do is you yeah. got to make sure that you you got a round nut yeah. here, but it's equal. No dips. Yeah. One place. It's all got to be nice and smooth. Yep. When you get it done, look at it and see if it all lines up. Right. You'll be fine. That's what it takes. It's only your own fault, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can also go see where I got this staple here, uh -huh. where it's like that. Then you pull this up to be the same. Yeah, the same pattern, same, part of the pattern. Right. Yeah, I was looking at pull that. Pull that up to be the same. You got it, or is it calm down some? There. I don't want to get too close to the tent. Now this has to be pulled up more to be like that. Right. It sort of slipped a bit when I was watching you. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Okay. Okay. And you can see that all at once we get these corners in. Yeah, it's it's it nice and straight. Nice and straight. Right. Okay. Now this one here has to be 
just a little bit more. Does that look right? Where is it? Yeah, that is. Oh man, I'm facing the right direction for this. <laughs> So that's when I squish like the corner, it comes up perfectly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay, what we have to do is start with this, the shorter end first. Because of the fact that uh, you really got to I like how to get that one. Uh huh. But what I want to do is get one more here. Then I want to pull this, push this corner in, and pull this, this up like so. And then. looks nice and smooth. Right. And not sticking out more than the other. See. <laughs> this corner half. Yeah. Bring the corner up. And stay back here. And then you can bring this like this. Right, and that's the part where it's going to yeah. fold it back in. And then they got to pull it snug mm -hmm. like the rest. stuff is nasty against your knuckles. <laughs> I can see that like you, I'd wind up if you're levering on it, uh -huh. you'll you'll sandpaper your knuckles off. Well my hands used to be very calloused. Yeah, but when I just like when I do it to a lot of jewelry I, work. I do on that. Yeah. yeah. Because when, it was like when I've been doing, been doing a lot of jewelry work that's heavier stuff like like anvil work and stuff. I was at a an event in uh, Mississippi one time and a blacksmith came in and he said, Show me your hands so my hand. He looked at and he had, he held out his hands, and except for the fact that my hands were smaller than he is because he was a grown man, yeah, you know he's like, cool. You work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you can tell if somebody knows how to work. Well, it's funny because when you go to a jewelry conference mm -hmm. and somebody says I'm a jeweler, the first thing you do is look at their hands. And like right now, I have been working in the shop all that much, or I uh, and I can wear. Or well, if they're like a jeweler and just sell it. Sell it. Their hands are soft. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't have any, I only have a couple small nicks right now. But usually when I've been doing heavy production right before an event, mm -hmm. hands are kind of chewed up. And your nails are cut real short so that you're not, Whoa. you know, because you, you know, you kill yourself otherwise. And yeah. I'd get to a conference and we'd, we'd be, you'd be talking to somebody and they'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a jeweler and I'm looking at them like, yeah, with a French manicure and not a single nick on your hands. I'm like, so who do you design for? I'd say you don't. No, <laughs> well, they design. Do they? They just but they don't. don't they're do no the manufacturer. Yeah. And it's it was very funny because I had a couple of people who kind of went, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know. And sometimes my hands are in perfect shape because I've been out uh, like when I'm on the road. Mm -hmm. You're not actually manufacturing. You're just selling your stuff. Yeah. So you've been uh, you've had a chance for your the skin to get clean on your hands because you get your, you get stains right here from working with the metal the metal and with the um, the chemicals that you use. Yeah. It gets, it's like being a mechanic. It gets down into your skin and it doesn't come out until the skin wears off. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Now, 
but we've got to get this one here. It come like that, it won't hurt it a bit. No. Now, no, this is a heavier fabric than that other. Yeah, it is. I did it. Looking at it, it didn't seem like it was different. But this stretches really differently than the other this one. This is does. a stronger fabric. Right. That's why. That's interesting. I will. I will never look at my. Uh, you use a lot. Use a lot of upholstery fabric for making uh, Renaissance clothes uh -huh. because the patterns are right. Uh -huh. You know, but but you always have to be careful that you don't get the stuff that's got the heavy plastic back to them. Oh yeah. Because that makes you miserably warm clothes. <laughs> it's like wearing a large plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard to make it drape right on the body. Yeah. Because it's too stiff. It's meant for chairs. <laughs> and although some of us have bumpers, we don't necessarily feel like a chair. You know. <laughs> But, uh, okay, um, I'm going to cut this back to this a little mm -hmm. bit so you can see it. I can see the little hole there, Once yeah. Once you see it, yeah. Yes. You know where it is. Yeah. That's what counts. See, that one will be okay. I'm going to do that corner before I do Whoops, wait a minute. We've got to, okay, this one's side. All right. We've got to pull this corner. Yeah. What I find interesting is, Seeing how you're doing the corners, having seen what the backs look like from the quote unquote professionals at the factory, uh -huh. you know, I can see there's a distinct pattern to the way the fabric's being folded because it's geometry. Right. But then I see, you know, like where you'll take out the extra stuff where they just left it. They yeah. didn't bother because it's faster. Not to, not right. To, you know, well, I like to trim it off and, yeah. and that because it makes it easier to put the weld on and then also put it on the chair. Right. And then if someone does turn it over, don't look completely sloppy. <laughs> yeah, right. But a Just lot of them will have cambric on the bottom of them. Uh -huh. So that when you take them off, you got a finished product on both sides. Right, right. So it's like it it's like a, it's like seeing both sides of a pillow that way yeah. instead of just a board. But you find if you push in the foam on the bottom, uh -huh. it also helps you bring that up. Well, I noticed when I was doing the one side, just by pushing the foam up and running my hand around, I could smooth it up and have the fabric just slide right up and get the That's stuff. Good. You want to feel you know. the roundness of yeah. it. You don't want to feel the edge of the foam. You right. want to feel the roundness of it being pushed in. Right. I was surprised at how much just pushing from the bottom like that really made the fabric move and made it make possible to get everything nice and tight. And yeah. Smooth. Makes a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if I do too many of these things. I'm going to make this room a little bit more workable mm -hmm. than what it is. Yeah, well having this off the ceiling in some way would be really a big boom so you're not tripping. Yeah. I've been trying to do stuff like that in my studio to try and make it more manageable when you have some specific project. Yeah, you know. well I had about ten more times this for my shop. Yeah. I don't have all this Duff. kind of junk in here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you weren't thinking of this as, as, a, as an actual upholstery shop. Well, I I, no, I wasn't. Well, I, if I wanted to do something, yeah. yes, but I But there's was. a difference between because production and just doing a chair because you want a new chair. Putting my, uh, a place to put my stuff. Start with the good end. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really have to uh, sew them together, but it was a good practice for you anyway. <laughs> because one goes from here to there of the full fabric, because we didn't have any cut off like we did in the, uh, okay. the other one. And then you cut that weld off there, you yeah, diagonal it so that when you pull this down, it's not sticking out so much uh -huh. to put a finished edge on that. Right. You don't ever leave it open. 
like they did when they yeah they did this. Well, like I guess they came out of the factory. We were glad to have chairs. We had folding just, chairs at that point. So this was, this was a big step up. <laughs> And you just feel where the wood is at. Yeah. And that's where you want to start it. And then shoot it in there so it won't. And if it doesn't stick, thicker it is, just put a longer staple in the gun. Right. But this is more than long enough. I went for 3 8 inch staples. Half is just too, too long. And I've got nine sixteenths too. And you're just keeping this right. on the edge of the wood. Right. Yep. You're just using your finger as a guide. Uh -huh. So that you can tell exactly where it is. Uh, you always want to make sure when you do that though, with your finger, that you're not hitting like the way you take all those other staples out. Yep. If that staple hits It'll another ricochet. staple instead of coming, catch ya. Catch ya. <laughs> catch ya. Yep. So that's yeah, another no, reason I have that concept why from... you always clean up before you right. do a job. Because I've taken things apart that's had the old material under it uh -huh. and old staples, old nails. Yeah. I never repulsor anything over old fabric. I always take it down to nothing. Mm -hmm. Join it. Do you usually join it in the center back here so that yes, it's the least in the center back, and you overlap the fabric. Uh huh. One side will have the welt, and then it'll still be long. You fold that over, and you, when you get it here, you open up and stick this welt inside that. And right. Okay. That's just exactly the same way I would do it on fashion fabric. To be right. honest. Yeah. Definitely. So you have all your finished edges. And yeah. I need my little scissors there. I should put a pair on my. My apron, I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> you usually do have, but. Well, you're out of practice. I'm out of practice, that's right. <laughs> well, you know, I can always tell it when, I've, when I haven't been doing a specific task for a while. Uh -huh. I actually keep notes because there's times when I don't do a specific thing in the shop for months. You know, you make, you know, you make 25 of an item. Well, sometimes you sell them right away and sometimes you don't. Yeah. And it might, there's tricks to some of the casting stuff that I do. So look. That is a nice looking chair, Steve. Make a nice looking chair. I think it's going to be really pretty in those chairs. Yeah. Be like new furniture. Yeah, well, I, that's what I'm going to do is I've got them set aside and I'm going to um, repair any chips in the, in the finish and uh, make sure they're all cleaned up and waxed and boiled and yeah. all other stuff before I go to use them. How old is the furniture? Uh, 1990, I'm guessing, three. <laughs> oh, we had we had fun. It was fun. It's fun. I actually love working with someone. I do. I mean, you know, well, not everyone I've worked with I enjoy, but, you know, sometimes you're talking to somebody and you're like... <laughs> One to what, huh? Oh, dear, is there anyone home? But, you know, yeah. it was fun. I did learn a lot. Thank you.